So might eliminators with last fusals be the new hotness, a damage output not so far behind eradicators, or a unit that's cheap enough to be a screening unit and can forward deploy with some ridiculous durability in cover. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd revisit Eliminators and do a general all points guide to the unit, now that once again Games Workshop seems to have buffed them into the stratosphere and they look like one of the single strongest datasheets in the Space Marine Codex. In the video we'll start by talking over their datasheet and their recent series of buffs that have got them to this point, a comparison of their damage and defence to a couple of other units, some of the better buffs and synergies to use on them in game, how they fit in with a few chapters, and how I think about using them on the battlefield at the moment. Loads to talk about, so let's jump straight in. So first up, here's the Eliminator's datasheet, 25 points per model, and they've basically got the stat line of a Primaris Marine that hits on twos, coming in small squads of three in the heavy support section. They've got the options of either a Bolt Sniper Rifle, a fairly decent sniper with Strength 5, AP-2 and Damage 2, and a couple of different firing modes, or the powerful Laz Fusel, basically an anti-tank gun with a single shot at Strength 8, AP-3, Damage 3. To be honest, I already quite liked Eliminators in the Space Marine Codex. They were originally 30 points when the book came out, but they dropped down to 25 on the Bolt Snipers, and that's really not a lot more than the base troops in the Codex, particularly things like Infiltrators or Incursors. The Bolt Snipers are some of the better snipers in 40k per the points, and with their camo cloaks giving them a very nice plus one to their saves in cover, they were already very tough hunkered down in light cover on objectives for the cost. Just the unit price as well is really quite handy, 75 points is fairly cheap and expendable by marine unit standards, and they can be fairly sacrificial if you need to just hold the enemy back for a turn. If one of your units is going to eat a big nasty deep strike charge or something, it may as well be these guys rather than a massive squad of your own elites. Then in the previous balance data slates they got even better, Armour of Contempt is by far more relevant on units with high saves, and these guys already had an effective 1 plus save in cover, meaning that normally if you can get them light cover, Typically they'll be saving things like AP-3 stuff on a 3+, which is ridiculously good. At the same time, the bodyguard rules were also changed as well, making their snipers a lot more useful. Important characters are less likely to be absolutely unshootable by sniper units. I think most lists still didn't really want to go mad on them, they were still a bit more of a utility unit and he didn't want loads. But for a single heavy support slot, if you had one, I thought they were quite handy for the combination of screening and opportunistic character killing. Now though, in the latest points update, last fusals just became free. Basically now for all this utility and a really tough 25 point model, you've also got a single anti-tank shot, so 3 ballistic skill 2, strength 8, AP3, damage 3 shots for a cheap unit, and now they're one of the best anti-tank choices in the codex, not all that far behind melter platforms. I feel that just when you've got a unit that can both screen well and deal great damage like this, you're basically in for a good time no matter which way you choose to use them. We'll get onto their damage output in just a second, but aside from that they do have one other option on their datasheet, which is the Instigator Bolt Carbine. This one's an interesting choice where you get a single shot at 24 inches, it's only strength 4 and damage 2, so it could do a little bit of opportunistic sniping. This actually gives the squad some crazy utility, as the covering fire rule basically lets you move, shoot, then move again. Either you can go in for three of the main weapons, either sniper rifles or last fusels, and get the maximum firepower out of the unit, or you can get less firepower from the squad, but get more utility. Say for example, you could now have two last fusals and one bolt carbine, hide them out of line of sight or an objective, stride forward, fire off two shots, and then use the bolt carbine's extra move to get you back out of line of sight again. Really good stuff, that's positively some Eldar shenanigans going on there. It's pretty powerful just for the extra movement as well, it means they essentially move 12 inches per turn, and could theoretically still charge after that if you wanted. Their damage output isn't usually super hot on the charge, but could still kill a few light infantry or tie up something important with a cheap unit. Overall, I think every single loadout for Eliminators is really strong now, and particularly with the last fusals, I feel like we're going to see people using them in lists. Just for a few numbers on their damage and defence, here's a comparison of 5 Eradicators with standard Melter Rifles facing up against 3 units of 3 Eliminators with last fusals. At 24 inch range, the Eradicators do something like 15 wounds to a Toughness 7 vehicle, or kill 1.7 Custodian Guard, whereas the Eliminators with last fusals do around about 12.5 wounds to that Toughness 7 vehicle, and 2.5 Custodian Guard, a little bit worse against the mid-range armour, but a little bit better against the 3 wound infantry. I feel like just on the face of it, it's disturbingly comparable damage, 
particularly when Eradicators are perhaps one of the single best anti-tank damage dealers in the Codex. I do know it's a bit more complicated than that, both the units do have other decent advantages. If the Eradicators get within Melter range, then they will fairly handily win the damage contest against the vehicles at least, and if they take the heavy Melter rifles, again that puts them a little bit further ahead per point. Also, even at just the base 3 models, they're still a bigger, chunkier unit, and are better for targeting stratagems and things that. On the other hand though, as we already mentioned, the Eliminators do have a ton of advantages. Cheap and disposable units for screening, much tougher in light cover against high AP stuff, as we'll see, and of course better range at 36 inches. I just feel like if we are talking about Eliminators on a similar sort of level to the Eradicators, then with all of their other advantages, I think we are going to see them being used a lot. Talking of their defence though, I thought we'd just compare their durability against a few other platforms, and here's them tanking hits against a bolt rifle with strength 4 AP1, an Avenger Gatling cannon with strength 6 AP2 damage 2, and enemy las fusels with strength 8 AP3 damage 3. I thought it'd be interesting to compare to intercessors as a bit more of a general battle line unit, and eradicators as a typical damage dealer. Outside cover, perhaps not unexpectedly, the eliminators do fall behind a bit, the Intercessors are pretty much just a flat 25% more durable against them, against all of those. Makes sense as they're basically the same profile and get one extra model for 100 points. Whereas the Eradicators are a bit tougher against Bolt Rivals, a little bit tougher against the Night Gatling Cannon, but very much decently weaker against anything with high strength and high damage. I'd say at least compared with the Eradicators, survivability is perhaps fairly comparable, as there's usually quite a lot of high strength and damage firepower going around in 9th. In Light Core though, particularly with their Armour of Contempt, the Eliminators really shine against anything with high AP. They'll still be killed pretty much equally against AP0 and AP-1, as all the units will be saving on 2s, but to be honest those types of firepower just aren't really efficient against Space Marines anyway, so it's not really the biggest deal. Against the Avenger Gatling Cannon though, they are massively more durable than the Intercessors, despite them being cheap troops with fairly less threatening guns. It would take 36 Gatling Cannon hits to remove 100 points worth of Eliminators, and only 22 of those hits to remove 100 points worth of Intercessors, due to the Eliminators saving on 2s and the Intercessors saving on 3s. It's even worse for the Eradicators, they only take 20 hits, and versus the last Fusals, the Intercessors gain a little bit, but the Eradicators fall yet further behind, as they really hate being hit by damage 3 shots. It does mean that Eliminators are a bit terrain dependent, but provided they're somewhere on the board where they can set up and receive that cover benefit, they're going to be super hard to shift, and unless you catch them in combat or deal mortal wounds to them, virtually no weapon is going to be in any way efficient. Not at all bad for a unit that's already got some of the most efficient anti-tank in the Codex and at long range. So how else can we make a bit more out of the Eliminator squad then? First up, obviously character auras will be handy. If you do happen to have reroll ones to hit or wound from captains or lieutenants, that's all well and good. And I guess if your opponent did have a whole ton of three wound infantry or vehicles, it could well be worth castling up for the extra damage boost. Typically though, I wouldn't be all that interested in casting psychic powers or litanies on them, as the single unit being 75 points is just a bit small to justify that kind of investment. Stratagems wise, again they don't tend to be typically all that efficient for codex specific ones, but plenty of the actual core codex space marine ones are okay. Transhuman physiology is usually useful for a unit that just needs to desperately cling to life to score some points on an objective. Guerrilla tactics can be useful late game to pop them back into strategic reserve, they can then emerge as an annoying threat later. Two command points to shoot while doing an action sometimes might be worth it. Depends on whether or not, say, maybe three last fusel shots are worth two CP. And again, two command points might be worth a round of shooting from all spec scan if the opponent does set up close. Finally, for codex synergies, you can run them in that vanguard spearhead, which I think is a fairly strong way to run eliminators in themselves, but overall the army is just very weak as a whole, just because it cuts down a whole ton of your options within the Space Marine Codex, and leaves you with few other damage dealers. In any case, if you did want to make a full Phobos army try and work, then light cover at greater than 18 inches is good, so is the plus one to hit if moving greater than 4 inches, they'll be able to move around the board hitting on 2s, which is quite nice. If we looked at the specific chapter supplements, then a lot of those are good as well though. Generally I think that the raw data sheet is now just efficient enough to be included in any chapter, you don't need to worry too much about not getting the most out of an assault chapter's synergies, They'll just provide a bit of good long-range fire support, but there are plenty of chapters that do help out the Eliminators specifically. Ultramarines have a trio of good things, falling back in a shoot is okay if you're tagged, moving and shooting without penalty is great in their tactical doctrine, keeping up those hitting on twos is very nice, and their rapid redeployment stratagem pre-game is great as well. 
anything that can set up close to the enemy and then pull back if they're too threatened, that will usually get good value out of that. Iron Hands I think are another really high value one. A 6 plus feel no pain for extra durability is pretty darn good against anything that's damaged too. Gives you a pretty high chance of the damage 2 shot not killing a whole eliminator. And they'll absolutely love being Iron Hands for the first turn at least. Their doctrine allows them to move and shoot without penalty, so still hit on a 2 plus. And also re-roll ones to hit with their heavy weapons to boot. If you were planning on moving and shooting your eliminators anyway, that equates to roughly a 45% damage boost on the first turn, which is pretty massive on such an efficient firing platform. Next up we've got the Raven Guard. They get on great with eliminators of all stripes. Getting cover in the open is great as it means that you've got a lot more of the board to deploy in, but if you did want to go for cover then getting minus one to hit when you're there is also very nice. Raven Guard maybe has a bit more of a decision to make between the snipers and the last fusals as they get plus one to hit and wound against characters in their tactical doctrine and that could make the snipers into a whole other level of efficiency. Otherwise Salamanders get their single wound reroll. It could be also quite nice to use the successor chapters for Master Artisans and Stealthy. Eliminators would love both of those. Imperial Fist having ignores cover is nice, plus their unique Devastator Doctrine is actually somewhat useful on the fusals, maybe one of the better ways to use that. They also get on abnormally well with the Bolt Sniper Rifles, extra hits on sixes is great. Death Watch are the chapter that can fill the most Eliminators if you want to spam them. Their Spectrus Kill Team can allow you to field 5 Phobos Troops and then 5 Eliminators in a big Sniper Squad, so 125 points for 5 last fusals seems pretty awesome. That squad even gets objective secured, and Death Watch have their own inbuilt rerolls, and quite a lot of decent options for helping out infantry units. I feel like if I was playing Death Watch, I'd be very tempted to have that 125 points worth of eliminators along. Barely any more expensive than infiltrators, they still get objective secured, and get the advantages of camo cloaks and a massive anti tank gun. Otherwise, perhaps the other chapters don't have quite as much standout combos, a few useful things here and there maybe. But even most melee chapters or we need some sort of fire support or objective holders or it's useful to have a little bit in the army. And even small cheap units like Eliminators in Blood Angels and Space Wolves can punch surprisingly hard against enemy light infantry. So overall as you can probably tell I think the Eliminators are pretty awesome at the moment and currently I think if I were to field them myself I'd probably be most tempted by a trio of last fusals, maybe or maybe not having one of them swapped out for the awesome extra movement that the instigator bolt carbine can bring. I really like the idea that you could just completely play them differently depending on the opponent and depending on what targets you had. If you took three sets of three with a trio of last fusals, you could just group them all together as a big damage dealer, keep them inside a captain or lieutenant aura, and set up somewhere in some light cover with decent visibility, and just blast away at the enemy all game long at what they can see. I think first turn, if they had some scary firepower, I would think about putting them behind the light cover and then moving into it. I think often it's going to be better to hit on threes on the first turn, and just make sure that you're not alpha struck off the table, even if they are pretty tough once they are in cover. If the army that you're playing isn't quite as bothered by lots of strength 8 damage 3 shots, maybe you're playing against a horde with tons of light infantry, it's probably going to be a bit better to screen or use them to take objectives. You could just use them to hold a backfield objective that you don't think your opponent could reach, 75 points is very cheap for doing so, or forward deployed to screen out enemy deep strikers, put them on far flung objectives that your opponent's going to struggle to reach as well. And I quite like the way that base 3 model units can still work for engage on all fronts these days. Plenty of secondaries can be quite helpful for them. When the enemy is closing in, if they do happen to be on the front lines, I would still always remember that assault is an option to bully some light infantry. Particularly if you have an assault chapter and they're in the assault doctrine, they could punch very hard indeed. For example, Blood Angels Eliminators will be getting 13 attacks at strength 4, AP 1 and plus 1 to wound on the charge. And that's going to make a big mess of anything that's toughness 3 and low save. Overall, I think if you do happen to have some Eliminators, it could well be worth including. I feel like plenty of lists might be tempted by 1-3 to three cheap units of them, and depending on the opponent, you can either deploy them as solid, cheap anti-tank fire support with great defence in cover, or annoying cheap little screening and action doing units, raising banners and getting points in the midfield early, while the rest of your army goes about doing what it wants to. If you're going to trade any unit with the enemy, then it may as well be these guys. So let me know what you think of the Eliminators down in the comments below. I must admit I am rather impressed. Looking forward to trying out a few of them in my Space Marine lists going forward. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, with new ones out just about every day. There'll certainly be plenty more coming for the Space Marines. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, 
I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next in the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.